how are you doing today? My name is Mary, this is Happily Ever Esh, and today we are talking about all the books that we, I, read in January 2020. I had a pretty great reading month in January. I read, or I finished six, six books, halfway through another one, pretty proud of myself, and it was an overall really pretty decent reading month. I enjoyed most of what I read and you just can't ask for more than that. So without further ado, let us chat about some books. I have some chai tea, so cheers friends. Hope you're drinking something lovely. Let's just hop on in. First book that I finished this month was The Lone Nonfiction. I listened to it on audio and that is Talking to Strangers. What We Should Know About the People We Don't Know by Malcolm Gladwell. This was my first Malcolm Gladwell, but I know he writes popular psychology, nonfiction, um, science-y books. <laughs> Lots of um, descriptive words there. I really enjoyed this one. He made the audiobook to be very reminiscent of a podcast. There's music. He puts in clips of the people actually talking when he has those clips to do so, when he's interviewing someone in the book. For quotes, he tries to use their actual voice and their actual interview or talking, which is really cool. So it did have a very much podcast vibe to it. The audio quality was just and the production quality was really great on this one. So if you're interested in picking up some non-fiction on audio, I highly suggest this one. But what is this book about? Gladwell wrote this story to answer the question, why can and do things go horribly wrong between strangers? Whether that's an interaction on the street or our misconceptions about strangers, like why do things sometimes just go terribly, terribly wrong? He's looking at what assumptions or ideas um, do we hold as people that are leading to these really terrible interactions and how can we collectively as a society do better? He starts this book off by looking at one question in particular and that is the tragic case of Sandra Brown who is pulled over, stopped for failing to use her blinker by a highway um, patrolman. Is Events happen and is then arrested, placed in jail, and um, takes her own life um, very tragically. You know, obviously this is a shocking um, event that kind of reverberated through, um, I would say, the greater United States. And really just how did this horrible injustice happen? And obviously there are many reasons um, and many factors going into to why this happened to Sandra Brown, but Gladwell is in particular looking at why their interaction as two strangers went so awry. What assumptions were they were they making? In particular, was this police officer making about Sandra Brown? And how can we collectively as a society um, have information that will help us stop tragedies such as um, this one from happening in the future? So from getting this introduction um, about this story, it then starts this extended case study and narrative of the rest of the book looking at the why. He spends a lot of time breaking down psychological studies and then also looking at particular cases and kind of breaking them down with the information we gain from some of these psychological studies um, to how and why we interact with strangers, what assumptions we carry into conversations and interactions with strangers, um, and kind of challenging our own assumptions, the things that we think we know that we really don't. He looks at a lot of really high profile cases, cases um, and situations that I think you would be very familiar with um, if you live in the United States and pay somewhat attention to news or um, social issues, but then also is looking at some like historical case studies and things that I didn't know as a reader and I found it all very interesting. I think what Gladwell does the best in this book is breaking down these psychological studies, these psychological um, papers, and kind of giving you the need to know information and explaining it in a really palatable way, um, while also tying in this appeal of learning about people and more of this like kind of sociological um, case study interaction, anthropological, I guess, if you will, um, 
interactions um, and going and studying different people groups. Um, so he makes it very compelling in that sense that he's taking really kind of um, a little more heady information and giving it to you in a more digestible package. He's definitely going deeper than just the social commentary, the things that we're talking about on the news or maybe when you sit down and talk with a friend or a community member or a neighbor or a family member about these events and really kind of going and digging like what is um, our brains and our bodies and our assumptions, um, what does that look like um, from, like I said, um, more of a psychology standpoint. I will say though, I felt like this book was missing some of that nuance because that's not really his bag. He's not looking at the nuance of the situations. I but overall, I really enjoyed this book. It definitely sheds some light. I think it's not worrying about being a little controversial in some ways. Um, and I really kind of appreciated his his willingness to like dig into that, even though sometimes it was like, well, I don't really like what you're saying, or maybe that's not the most palatable to me, but kind of looking at like what the science says behind it. Overall, I really um, found this book compelling and interesting and it really made me think about myself, my own assumptions and my own kind of biases going into conversations or my own beliefs about the world and how that affects how I interact with other people. And like I said, the audiobook was phenomenal so I would absolutely recommend that if you're into audiobooks or even if you're not, I think this would be a great one to try. I think podcasts are becoming a very consumed media source among the masses and this very much feels like a, an extended, you know, eight or nine hour podcast and so I think if you're into podcasts and you want to kind of make a bridge over to audiobooks this would be an excellent one. So overall I think I gave it four stars really enjoyed it. Was sad, kind of sad that's the only nonfiction that I read but glad that this was one that I picked up. I had been on the wait list on Overdrive for like months so I know it's a popular one but hop on that wait list um, if this sounds interesting to you. All right, I had a lot to say about that one. <laughs> Hopefully won't be so chatty about the rest of these. Um, the next book I finished was a mystery thriller. Ooh, got some hair in my mouth. A mystery thriller, mystery thriller by Peter May, and that is The Black House. This is set in the Isle of Lewis in Scotland. We're following our main character detective, um, Finn McLeod, McLeod, um, not sure if I'm saying that correctly. And he is called to go back to this small island that he's from um, because there is seemingly a connected murder um, that happened there. So he goes and he's confronted with his past. He's confronted with the small village that he kind of just left 20 years ago and hasn't been back since. In the beginning, I was so sucked into the writing and the world. His atmosphere he builds is really great. I don't think I've read a book set in Scotland and I know I haven't set one set, read one set in the Isle of Lewis. So I was just sucked in and transported. I would say about after one fourth to a half of the book, I was kind of over it honestly. Um, he's Peter May spends a lot of time flashing backwards and forwards because we're kind of learning about Finn's life along with, with the murder. And usually I'm so into that narrative storytelling line, um, very much in the vein of The Dry by Jane Harper, which I loved. This one didn't do it for me so much. We seem to only be focusing on Finn's past um, and then also him like kind of going around and um, getting reconnected with all of the people that he left and it seems like the mystery part of the story took like a way back seat, which fair enough. I like to learn about characters. I like character studies. Um, but then all of a sudden it just like wraps up at the end. And I was like, well, I don't even really care about this line of story that we've been reading about anyway, because you haven't really been giving me anything to care about. And also I just didn't like the way he handled a lot of topics. Um, the way he writes about women wasn't my favorite. Um, and then also kind of some like very traumatic heavy things. He just kind of brushes over and makes it seem very trivial at the end. And I don't know, it just wasn't my favorite. I won't be continuing on with the trilogy, but it did pique my interest in reading more books set in Scotland because oh my gosh, this place sounds gorgeous. So thank you for that Peter May, but no thank you. I don't want to read any more of your books. I'm sorry. Okay. That that was the worst one. We can move on from that. But the rest of the books I enjoyed. That one I gave two stars probably. So yeah, I, I don't do that a lot, but just was not my favorite. All right. The rest of these books, again, really enjoyed. So we have happy thoughts to go on from here. 
Next book I finished was Commonwealth by Anne Patchett, my first Anne Patchett, and I am stoked to say that I loved it. I loved her writing and I'm excited to read more from her. Um, I also live relatively close to Nashville. Um, took a trip this summer that was super quick. Judah, my little baby, was still very young and we went for a wedding and kind of went there, went back, but I'm so excited to visit again and to go visit her bookstore. And like, maybe she'll be there. I don't know, is she just like chilling? I, I have no reason to believe that, but if she was, oh my gosh, I would be so excited because I loved this book. Okay, what is this book about? This book follows the Keating and Cousins family. And in the beginning, we are thrown into Southern California, hot summer, it's a baptism baptismal party um yes i think the youngest one is baptized so a baptismal party and we have this event that happens that completely changes the course of these two families lives for the next 50 years and we as the reader are along for the ride it definitely looks at how the um, decisions of uh, these two parents um, affects their children and reverberates um, throughout their lives to kind of shape shape them. I loved the storytelling style. It's not a linear narrative. We're given this first event and then we jump around from um, different perspectives of time and of place and from different characters perspective. And I loved that because it almost felt like a connected short story collection because we're spending so much time and just kind of getting these chunks of scenes from these people's lives do we like doing all this <laughs> but that's how I felt that's this is what the book does in visual format okay the story grapples definitely with choice kind of looking at how there really is no choices that we make that don't affect other people um, I kind of get this like tapestry and when you pull one thread other threads are puckering and you know this one comes out and it's unraveling and there is nothing that happens that doesn't affect your friends and family and the people that you are around and I just really thought that it made a very poignant point of how we are so interconnected and so woven together um, our lives with the with the people around us I just I loved the characters I love the dialogue um, there's also some really good quotes about being a reader and reading in this so just my book lover heart appreciated that and overall, I just, I loved it. I loved it. It was a great family saga. And I'm so excited to read more Ian Patchett. So that was Commonwealth. All right, another one that I finally finished. I actually started this the very end of December. And it's a short little guy, but a little more weighty. So I think, you know, it just took a little more time to get through was The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. This, besides um, some of the Chronicles of Narnia books, it was my first time reading through a C.S. Lewis essay book thing. There's a lot that I could say about this, um, a lot to discuss, but I think overall this book is um, a fictional book but really looking at the human condition and ultimately what will reign um, in our hearts as people. And he's definitely making the point that it will be something. Something will reign um, and what will that be? So this is a book about Christianity. Um, we're following, it's an epistolary novel um, written between two demons. We kind of have this, um, de we almost like this apprenticeship relationship. So we have like the boss demon and the apprentice um, and we're reading from like the boss, the guy in charge who is um, kind of just how to corrupt a soul, writing on how to corrupt um, a human soul and all the ways that, that can be done. So. You know this is a classic and I really enjoyed it. I think C.S. Lewis is a very intelligent person and I appreciate the way um, that he writes and I will be reading more C.S. Lewis um, throughout my life for sure. So I really enjoyed this one and yeah glad to have read it. All right I read some poetry guys um, which I mean maybe you have no idea you're like good for you but I've like never sat down and read a whole poetry collection and I did it I read Felicity by Mary Oliver and this was inspired by um, one of the pastors at my church we're starting a series in the Psalms um, the Psalms are a book of poetry um, and songs in the Bible it deals a lot with human emotion and um, 
the pastor was just talking about how we don't read enough poetry as, as people. And I was like, yeah, I'm a reader and I don't like ever read poetry. And just really talking about how um, poems are, are a slice of emotional moments for people. And we need to just sit with the words and be okay with what they're saying um, about the emotional state of that moment. And I really, identified with that because I think sometimes I, I approach poetry and I want to get so much out of that and I think that's like putting way too much expectations on the poetry and so I went into this and I'm like I'm gonna sit with this emotional moment and I'm gonna enjoy it and I did and I kind of knew I was gonna love Mary Oliver. This is her last published poetry collection I believe and it's all about love really. I think Mary Oliver is at her best when she's writing about nature and humanity and how the two intertwine and I think that's kind of her bag anyway. I really I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm excited to pick up some of her other collections of poetry and you know tabbed it up. Um, in my cozy reading night I read a poem that I really enjoyed so I will read you another one here and it's called Everything That Was Broken. Everything that was broken has forgotten its brokenness. I live now in a sky house. Through every window the sun, also your presence, our touching, our stories, earthly and holy both. How can this be but it is? Every day has something in it whose name is forever. So that was, that was it, but I loved it. So yes, all right, and one more. The last book that I finished in January was The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri and I quite enjoyed this. I must go in saying that I had kind of really crazy high expectations because her book of short stories, Interpreter of Maladies, is one of my favorite books that I've read in the past couple years and so I think I went in with a little bit of a fun, unfair expectation but that being said I do think Lahiri's writing style is better suited for the short story format. This again was a family saga with a lot of similar themes now that I've kind of been thinking about it as Commonwealth, um, but this is an immigrant story. We follow the Ganguly, Ganguly family um, who has immigrated from Calcutta, India to the United States and we're following their lives and moreover their children's lives, um, in particular their son Gokul. We're again kind of looking at fate versus choice and how our choices then affect everyone around us and how fate and choice kind of play together in this very interesting sometimes not making sense way but they do you know I think it's also very much looking at what moments and events in our life define us and how much control we personally really have over any of it all <laughs> but really ultimately it's a story of immigration it's a story of belonging and home and what is home and what does it mean to belong to a place or not to belong and what about this in-between space where um, kind of this family seems to be sitting and really how do we build community where we are and um, I think this book is very much definitely looking at family found family building community and what that looks like but I think even more so for the children. Gogol and his sister Sonia have always belonged to America, but they've also, in a way, always belonged to their parents who very much belong and were born and raised in India, but now kind of also have a sense of belonging to America because they've lived here for so much time and built so much of their life there. And it was just, it was really good and beautiful. And Lahiri's writing style is seemingly so simple, but she writes every intricate little detail, which just makes you feel like you're living with this family. Also, I loved the parents. Um, I mean, Ashok and, oh gosh, what was the father's name? Sorry. Sorry, Ashok was the father's name. Ashok and Ashima. I just loved their relationship. I loved their relationship with their children and any time that we were um, reading from the narrator's like perspective of like looking down on them, I just, I loved it. I loved that part. And so I think if the book had followed them solely, I would have enjoyed it more. Just following Gogol, um, just cause I was like kind of more interested in their life, but um, and I was a little like 
upset at Google and his decisions and I was like, please don't do that. Um, but regardless, it was really good. I was a little let down just because I loved Interpreter of Malady so much and I just wanted to like love everything that she's written, but I really enjoyed it still and found a lot of value in it and just the perspective that I was able to, to get from reading this book. So I would still recommend it, but definitely recommend Interpreter of Maladies read that first because I think it's a lot better and I, I want you to like love Lahiri like I love Lahiri. Um, so that's it. Oh, I will talk about what I got halfway through. I don't have the dust jacket, but I got halfway through, oh, Six of Crows, ooh, beautiful. And I'm really enjoying it. It's fun, high story. I really like the characters and everyone says you're gonna really like the characters. Um, I'm excited to kind of see where it goes because we're like, just about to get in it, you know, like things haven't like happened yet. So, um, but I'm enjoying getting their backstory. I'm enjoying learning more about them. And yeah, I'm, I'm really liking this. Um, I think that the Grisha trilogy, I, I read the first one and I remember really enjoying Lee Bardugo's writing style, but just didn't care that much about like following the story. But I have a feeling like the way she's developing these characters and like letting me learn more about them, I'm definitely interested and in case you've been living under a rock and don't know what six of crows is about um it's a high story where um this group of ragtag criminals um are sent to to do something for the government yeah it's really good so far so yeah, that's everything I read in January. What did you read in January? I would love to chat with you about it down in the comments below. And here's hoping for a good February, man, you know. So, all right. Thanks, friends. I will talk to you later. Bye.